Okay, hi and welcome to note 7.5. Um, I'm on page two right now. Um, page one is the investigation. We'll do the, the uh, we'll do that investigation when we get to class. Um, but let me introduce the idea here. We're going to talk about graphing inequalities, but this time we're going to be focusing on ones with two variables, which is going to put us on a coordinate plane. So the ones that we've been doing previously have just one variable in them. The ones that we're going to do, so if we have one variable, then you're going to see that they're on a number line, something like this. If they have two variables, we're going to put them on a coordinate plane. So, <clears throat> again, just to review, an inequality then describes some kind of a region, has a boundary line in this scenario, where we talked about one variable, they had like a boundary point. We would circle a point or darken it in, and we'd scribble off in one direction, depending on what the situation was. In this one, we're actually going to create a whole line, because we're not going to have just one boundary point, we're going to have two. So we're going to graph it just like we do any other line that we've ever done before. And then we're going to decide which side we'd like to shade. And I'll show you how to decide that. Okay, so there's the difference between what we've been doing and what we're going to do. So to do this, step one then is to graph that boundary line. Which means that you're going to pretend that that inequality is just like every other equation that we've ever done. Um, if you prefer slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b. You can graph that way if you prefer standard form. You can also graph that way if it's if it comes that way or if you'd like to change it that way. So ax times by equals c. And you graph for the intercepts. And I'll show you one of those today. Um, once we've done that, we're going to read our inequality if they don't have the inclusion sign underneath. So if it's just a less than or a greater than sign, it's going to be a dashed line. Now when we did it singly, that would be an open circle. So a dashed line represents kind of like an open circle with one variable. If it has equal sign underneath, it's going to be a solid line. Okay, so that's the only new part to the situation. So graph a normal line, decide if it's solid or dashed. Then we have to decide which side to shade. Over here, we read the inequality. We said it was less than or greater than. We would shade left or right. In this one, it's fairly similar, but it's going to be in reference to our line. So if it's greater than, we're going to shade above. If it's less than, we're going to shade below. And that looks like right here. So this is a less than sign or less than and equal to. Then you're going to shade below the line, less than, below. Makes sense. If it's greater than or greater than or equal to, then you're going to shade above. Again, that makes sense. If it's greater than, you shade above the line. Another way to do that is a test point. So a test point then is where we pick any point. It says any point but zero, but zero, zero works well as long as your line doesn't go through the point. You try to pick something that doesn't go through the actual point. So when you graph your line, it's not on it. So you pick zero, zero or any other point that you want. See if that point makes that statement true. Okay, if it makes that statement true, you plug in your X coordinate and your Y coordinate and it comes out to be true, you shade that side. If it's not, you shade the other side. Okay, pretty simple. So let's go ahead and take a look at one. Okay, so it says graph this or these inequalities. We got two. So here's our inequality. If we look at it, it's already in slope intercept form. So we're going to go ahead and graph using that form. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just look at this part here. Just the equation of the line. We're going to we're going to graph just like we would normally do. There's our y intercept this three. So there's my point three right here. Now I'm going to go my slope, which is 2 over 1. Again, it's not there, but we can graph it that way. So up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Reverse it, down 2 left 1, down 2 left 1. Make your line. So now that we have our line, we're going to read this. This inequality says that it's not included. It's just a less than sign, so it's going to be dashed. So I'm going to go back through here. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to make this dashed, but we're going to try. Because my line is not dashed. Um, well, kind of. I'll go back in and erase the black and put the correct line in there. Let me pick a black pen right here. Let's see if we can dash this line quickly. So we're going to dash. There's my dash line. Not very good, but it'll work. So now that we've got our line dashed, we've got our line graph. That's our boundary line. Now we're going to read this inequality. We're going to try it two ways. One, the easiest way is to realize that this is a less than sign, so that means shade below the line. So here's my line. I'm going to shade below. Let me grab a highlighter for this. Grab green. So there's my line. I'm going to shade below. So that means that all the solutions that will make this inequality true will be in this green region. 
Okay. Finish shading. There we go. Points on the line, since it's dashed, will not be true, but any point below. So any point I pick, and let me pick one here. Use red. This point right here would, if I plug that coordinate in to this equation, true. If I pick this point here, if I plug that coordinate in, true. If I pick this point way out here, if I plug those coordinates in, true. If I pick this one on the line, not true because a line is not included. So remember, inequalities, the difference between them and equations is that any of the points in the solution set will make that statement true. Okay, so any of those points, any point that we pick on this side. Infinitely, obviously. So let's graph one together. <clears throat> Excuse me. This one's in standard form, so we're going to go ahead and graph by intercepts. Oh, I didn't talk about the test point. Here's the test point part. Let me go back. So here's our test point. I picked the test point 0, 0 because it wasn't on the line. It's right here. And if it's not on the line, it's okay to use. You don't want to use any on your line because you could be deceiving. If your line's included, you'll see it, but it won't tell you which way to shade. So take that test point there. You would plug in those coordinates, your x coordinate and your y coordinate. There's my x coordinate. There's my y coordinate. So 0 and then 2 times 0 plus 3. That means 0 is less than 3, and that is true. So that means you shade that side. If your test point wasn't true, that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means you shade the other side. In this case, it was true, so we shade that side there. So let's graph by intercepts here. Remember graphing by intercepts? We're going to find our x-intercept first. And to find our x-intercept, remember that it's going to have an x-coordinate and a 0 for the y-coordinate. So I'm going to plug 0 in here. So basically, this term is going to go disappear. So I end up with 3x is less than or equal to 10. So I'm going to divide by 3, and x is going to be less than or equal to 10 thirds, but since I'm going to graph that, I need to figure out how many times that goes in there. It goes in 3.5, um, maybe 3.3 would be a better statement, 3.3 times, so just a little bit greater than 3. Okay, so we're going to graph this at 3.3. Let me switch my pen really quick. So we're going to graph a 3.3 because that's an x-intercept, so somewhere close to 3. There we go. Let's go ahead and graph the y-intercept. So the y-intercept then would be with a 0 for the x-coordinate and a point for the y. So in this case, we're going to make that one 0 because 0 times 3 is 0. And we got a negative 5y. Don't forget your negative oops, is less than 10. Go ahead and divide by negative 5. Divide by negative 5. And we find out that y is less than or equal to negative 2. So our point's going to be negative or 0, negative 2. So we're going to go down here. So we're going to go ahead and extend that line. I'm going to use red just to keep this fast. Now, not the best line. I'm not going to take the time to fix it. I do apologize. It's hard to graph on here. So now that we've got that, we can use a test point or we can go ahead and read the boundaries on this. Um, it's hard to read the boundaries. Actually, it's, it's really pretty much impossible to read the boundaries when it's in standard form. So we're not going to be able to use this less than or greater than. It has to be in slope intercept form for that to take place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a test point. We will use 0, 0 because it's on one side, so we're going to plug in 0 here and 0 here. That whole side is going to turn to 0, so you can see why 0, 0 is a nice test point. So is 0 less than or equal to 10? Um, and that seems to be true, so we're going to shade that side. Let me grab my highlighter, and I'll use blue this time. I think I grabbed blue. And we're going to shade this whole side. Again, now we forgot to check our line, but it works out that it did was okay. Our line is, we can see it here less than or equal to, so that is a solid line. I forgot to check that in my steps, but we have graphed that correctly. So just to review how that works while I change my pen color here. Um, one, graph it like you normally would, nothing different, okay? Once you graphed it, check to see if your line is dashed over here or solid here, and then either, if it's in slope intercept form, read the less than or greater than sign to tell you which side to shade on, or if it's not, or if you'd rather, just plug in a test point, 0, 0, as long as it's not on your line. Okay? So those are the basic notes. Um, I'm actually going to take the time to do this one really quickly. 
No, I'm not actually because this notes we're at about 10 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll go over this note here in class. I think your homework is here. Um, if you choose to work on it tonight, you can. Otherwise, I'm going to go over these notes tomorrow in class as well. We'll do the investigation. I'll probably do that one problem and then you guys have time. Okay, sounds good. And we'll see you in class.